Hello, good afternoon. Linda Cromar here and just starting to use my new stand and I wanted to share we've been talking about list building all after all this whole week and this is the end of my very first week on Periscope. Very, very cool. And so I wanted to share with you some really good tips on how to build and thanks for all of the hearts welcome welcome and i didn't catch all the names but i see a whole bunch of people joining thanks a lot and i wanted to share with you some tips that you can use to keep your customers once you've went to all the trouble to get customers you want to keep them right and so I just, <laughs> I'm going to start out with a story because <laughs> this is kind of crazy. I had this lady, I was just doing her a favor mainly. Thanks, thanks a lot for all the hearts and hello everybody. Uh, anyway, this, uh, this lady, I just wanted to try out some, one of her products and this was online and, um, just want to try it out. I was just doing her a favor, uh, and a particular product that was for weight loss it was a tea that supposedly helps with that and it just turned out that the company actually had it um, back ordered and she did not tell me that it was back ordered and this was like almost three years uh, months ago and still has not arrived still has not been re reimbursed or anything and uh, she actually got angry when I said hey uh, it would be nice if I either got the tea or got reimbursed. So guess what that means in the customer situation if you think about it. And that is that you, yeah, I'm not going to tell a company name or a product because it's not about that. And I certainly don't want to badmouth anything. The major thing I want to point out to you was not so much about what the company did, but what this individual did. Uh, basically, saying that she wasn't going to refund and she wasn't going to take care of her customer. So guess what? I'm not her customer anymore, am I? And so uh, here's the number one point. Your customer, if you're going to take the time to get it, get that customer to treat them like they're golden, wouldn't you think? Treat them like they're important to you. Treat them like you would uh, want to be treated yourself. Uh, that's, you know, I said golden, and I do really definitely believe that it's very, very important. It's not the money. It's really not. It's really about how I was treated. I won't come back. So I want to treat every single person that becomes my customer the very, very best I can. And if uh, the company, for whatever reason, cannot uh, fulfill, then I need to find a way to satisfy that customer so that they're happy. Because guess what happens when somebody's not happy? They usually tell a whole lot of stories about what happened. Now, what you really want is people that are going to say, good stuff about how you treat them. So obviously, if you treat them well, then they're going to say, wow, come back to Linda. She treats you really good. She takes good care of you. So here, that's goal number one. You want to make sure you treat them like they're gold. And then after that, what about, you know, you've spent time building a list and you don't want that person to go away because then it's like you have to get five more to replace one person that isn't necessarily happy. So keep that person happy. You never want to make them angry. So, I mean, you know, it's not about you being right. It's about the customer being right. So think about that for a minute. Uh, how many times have you had a situation where really in a, in for really mainly you were more right than the customer but doesn't help you to prove you're right and hurt that customer's feelings and make them have a bad experience it's not so it's really better to swallow a little bit and not be so worried about being right but say okay how can I be better at taking care of that person and making them happy so they want to tell other people that I treat them well. Here's another thing to think about. 
Uh, I see a lot of people talking about not call, you know, accepting calls from people when they call you. But I almost always pick up the phone when I am getting a call, even if it turns out it's an automated call, because if it's my customer, I want to be able to take care of that person as best I can. Uh, so I do pick up the phone, and I've had people that have called me that haven't become my customer yet, that they are surprised that I answer the phone, and then they do become my customer, and one of my best ones usually. Now, you know, we talk about distributors all the time, but don't you realize that distributors are actually your customers as well, aren't they? So we're going to treat them all like they're worth something to us because the they talk about the lifetime of value of any individual that buys from you it's not just that one time they buy but it could be over a long period of time and it's a lifetime hi everybody thanks a lot for joining oh somebody from Ireland that's awesome so definitely make sure that you treat them well answer the call answer the call don't be we're not gurus here so <laughs> I think that's kind of silly when people think they're too good to answer the phone it's a lot harder to get back to them and answer their question later than it is just to answer their question right then and there and most of the time it's something simple you can take care of right away whether it's a problem to solve and aren't we actually problem solvers anyway or whether they're asking a question possibly about a new product. I had a gentleman that joined me just recently that he just wanted to ask some questions about a product that I offer. And then when I answered it in a way that he liked, he joined. And then another thing, let's not tell stories that are not true. For instance, he asked, well, I make $15 an hour. Can I replace that in a week? Well, that's not possible is it no matter what you're doing it's not possible unless it's a job and I don't offer somebody a job so I'm gonna say no I, I can't promise that and then again you can't make promises that you don't know whether or not they can fulfill because when it comes to their own production you can't make any promises about that can you so and then another thing is to let that customer make an appointment with you if it's going to be a longer consultation depending on what it is uh, so that they can get your full attention and and obviously you're not going to answer any other calls during that consultation period uh, you're going to give them your full attention and one thing that I especially appreciate being when I'm on a call with somebody where I'm the customer, I want them to actually ask me questions so that they can get a full idea of what it is that I need so that they can fulfill it. So if in the case of someone uh, saying, well, you know, I have this problem, then you, you have a chance to find out what their problem is and then you can actually see if what you have can solve their problem. Or if it's not something you can solve, you can give them some suggestions of other things they can do. And it's not always about your product. It might actually be about something else. So I am more interested in making sure that the customer is happy and therefore I don't give them promises that I can't keep. I'd rather under promise and over deliver than the other way around because that gives them a good experience. I can definitely promise you that. And thanks so much for all the feedback and all of the hearts. I so much love that. This is really a cool program, isn't it not? Yeah, you can be a resourceful person. You can you can give them uh, recommendations if, it, if what you have doesn't actually uh, have what they need. You know, they might have a need. Uh, here's an example. Maybe somebody is looking for legal advice. Well, I don't offer legal advice do I so if I knew somebody that I trusted that I could give them that name I would definitely do it but uh, you know I have to trust that person I wouldn't do it just because I have a name I'd have to know that that person really could fulfill that person's need and yeah build a referral pipeline that's a great idea Jake great 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 
I love it when people offer ideas that even you know, supplement what I'm, I'm talking about. That's great. You can tell them in advance what they're going to get so that they know exactly what to expect, whether it's on the consultation or whether it's in the product they're buying from you. Uh, sometimes that can be done on the website and sometimes that can actually be done through communication, whether it's online or on the phone. Um, most of the time, my customers are already customers before I'm talking to them. I don't do a lot of uh, cold calling or any of that, but I'm definitely willing to call a customer that needs my help. I'll be willing to set that up and be willing to talk to them. So I think I went over eight points. <laughs> Have you counted them? <laughs> and uh, But the major thing is we don't want unhappy customers, so we want to do everything in our power to make them happy because guess what? You're going to feel a lot more happy when you've done that for them as well, if you think about it, because if they're happy and you give them enough service, they're more than likely to go around trumpeting that they are happy than they are uh, going to tell anybody to follow. They're not going to tell anybody to follow you or to get your product if you've treated them badly. So, you know, that little story, it's not about that particular product and it's not about that company. It's about the feeling I got from that. And when you have people that uh, have done things that make you feel icky, you don't want to go back to them. So we don't want that kind of response from our customers, do we? So that's what I have to share. I wanted to keep this fairly short. I hope you're having a wonderful and happy Friday. It's almost evening. It's almost time to have fun, right? Are you coming from work or are you uh, already at home? And definitely share this this uh, this hangout that I or this Periscope I just did because uh, I like to give good tips and good uh, advice. And if you want to know more about me and more about how to get in touch, I actually put my newsletter as part of my description in my Periscope description. And I am enjoying all of the feedback I'm getting as well. And you guys all have the most awesome day for the rest of the day.